I grew up with the prequels. That's my childhood. It really means something to me. Right after watching this movie, I was just very disappointed. I had the Star Wars cover as a kid. I had the little pillowcase for Anakin on one side and the other guy with the glasses from the Power Racer on the other side. I even had a Darth Maul cake for my fifth birthday. But I remember seeing it as a kid and what I saw recently, it does not hold in comparison. Hey guys, Marquise Underwood here. Welcome back to The Quest. As I said before, I will be reviewing every Star Wars movie. I may do the animated film, I'm not sure yet, but for now I'm just starting with episode one, The Phantom Menace. First off, the very first thing I noticed was that this film was very dated. Um, this movie basically is made entirely in CGI. It's not really made in practical effects like the original trilogy. Due to it being made in CGI, the majority of the scenes do not hold up today. Um, you can tell that there's a lot of green screen involved too. Like there'll be maybe two or three actors on stage and you could tell that they're just walking around trying to figure out where to do this and where to do that. To be honest, the graphics nowadays kind of look like something that we'll do in a computer class right now at school or something. That's how dated these programs are. In the beginning of the movie, we see Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn. They um, encounter some battle droids who, as I said, they're made in CGI so they don't really look that good. But um, this is the first time you see battle droids in the Star Wars universe. And they're meant to be there for comic relief because they're not really a threat to the Jedi. But funny because when we first meet Jar Jar Binks, Qui-Gon Jinn says something, says something to the likes of, the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. And I thought it was really funny because that just really summed up Jar Jar Binks during this whole movie. As a matter of fact, Jar Jar Binks has something to say in almost every scene he's in. Whether he's crying about something, whether he's trying to convey his point to the Jedi, why they shouldn't do this plan, you know, it's Jar Jar Binks. Um, he's also made for comic relief. I think he's made for the kids too, but he kind of gets annoying after a while. I don't really, he doesn't really bother me, but you know, and his voice is just so irritating. Um, Misase! That's my Jar Jar Binks impression. Um, pardon me if it's not that good. But yeah, that's pretty much how he sounds during the whole movie. It's just, why? Why George Lucas, why? Right, so there's this fish scene where uh, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn they're in this ship and again chased by this giant fish and um, there's no fear in their faces. So that immediately took me out the movie. You could also tell that it was green screen, like the ship was on this stage set and the background was this green screen and maybe that has something to do with them having no emotions. But that really just took me out the movie, man. Like, how are you gonna have a giant fish and you know that the fish is chasing you and the only thing Qui-Gon Jinn's gonna say to Obi-Wan is, turn left, make it right. Like, what the hell is that? It's really important to show emotion in these scenes though, because if you don't, it shows that, it shows that there's no sphere, there's no suspense, there's no sense of I'm gonna die. I understand these are Jedi's, but come on. As a fan, you just wanna relate to the characters, and if everybody says something in the same way, with no emotion, it just takes you out the movie, and you just don't relate to the characters. The kid that plays Anakin Skywalker, that guy sucks. The guy sucks really bad. Um, Every other line, you know, he says, yippee, or something like that. It just, he's very annoying. He can't act. There's plenty of kid actors in time that can do a better job than that dude. Why can't he? George Lucas, I don't know what the hell he was thinking with this casting, but that kid had to go. I don't know how a 12 year old slave can make a robot on the level of this. Like, like, come on, man. You gotta be realistic here. I'm, I'm not buying that. And there's a scene in the movie where, um, Qui-Gon takes a sample of Anakin's bloodstream to see his levels of the force. I guess the force now, instead of it being all around you, it's now in your bloodstream, thanks to George Lucas. <sighs> but um, Anakin's bloodstream basically is above the levels of Yoda. I think it's actually, I think they said it's, um, I believe they actually said it's like the highest level that they ever encountered. So for a 12 year old kid to be better than Yoda, that's pretty remarkable. I think everybody remembers this film because of the pod race scene, as much as I remember Darth Maul. I never really noticed this until somebody pointed it out. I was watching this YouTuber called Chris Stuckman, who actually noticed this and I never really noticed this before. But like the way the pod race scene is shot, it's shot from left to right. And that kind of makes the shot feel more continuous as if you're seeing the same shot over and over and over. 
because you never see the shot going from right to left or on the other side of the vehicles besides from the scene's perspective so that kind of takes the tension away too in my opinion and in this movie there's also a lot of political scenes between the Jedi and Sith basically the Sith wants Queen Amidala or Padme to sign this paper to help start the construction of this whole new army those scenes are very long and tedious there's always you know somebody sitting down and somebody walking around giving their concerns of why they should and shouldn't do that um, kind of took me out the movie it was very boring to say the least I, after a while to stop paying attention to that crap and you know in A New Hope Obi-Wan said something along the lines that him and Anakin were best friends or good friends or whatever I did not get that in this movie at all Obi-Wan's an apprentice in this movie too, meaning that he's a teenager and learning his ways of the force too Obi-Wan doesn't really have a connection with Anakin in this movie as a matter of fact they probably only have maybe five scenes or less during the whole movie um, he doesn't really get introduced to Anakin until like the middle of the movie and it's just a weird awkward encounter Obi-Wan doesn't really want to take Anakin underneath his wings which I thought was really you know weird for someone that said that they're best friends even when um, Anakin is introduced to the Jedi Council they don't think Anakin is worthy of being trained I think they said he's too old um, they all know the force is strong with him, but just the fact that he's too old, they don't want to train him for some odd reason. Even though, you know, Qui-Gon Jinn said his levels were way above everybody else's too, they still didn't want to train him because his future was clouded. Um, he maybe go down the dark side and all this stuff. There's a prophecy about the one thing that they will bring balance to the force. Everybody's just questionable if, that, if it's him. Now, by far, the best scene of this whole movie is the Darth Maul fight. Yes, this fight is choreographed, but I don't care. It's the best fight in the whole movie. Possibly the best fight in the whole franchise, actually, on film at least. Um, you know, you see Darth Maul with the two two ends of the lightsaber. You know, first time you ever see that. It's very high agility for a guy for a lightsaber. So, you know, that was really fresh to see. I'm still trying to figure out why Obi-Wan didn't do a force dash thing when the little doors came down on him. Um, you know, when Qui-Gon Jinn died, you know, his facial expression could have been better. I didn't really think it was necessary, to be honest. Darth Maul gets kicked down the hole. Qui-Gon, as he's dying, he tells Obi-Wan to take, you know, care of Anakin and to train him in the Force. And um, Obi-Wan, you know, all of a sudden wants to do that and help him out and just do his task. And after, you know, Qui-Gon dies, Yoda apparently wants to train Anakin, even though he's still on the reserve about it. He still wants to train Anakin just to help him out with the Force. During the movie, there's like this relationship between Padme and Anakin you know like I said Anakin's like 12 in the movie Padme has to be at least you know 18 18 up and there's like a little bit of flirting going on between the two I thought it was kind of weird yeah I'm giving this movie a C a 2.5 you know overall this movie does not hold up technology has evolved so this movie is kind of being left in the dust there's no sense of tension or suspense in the movie really everybody just says everything with a one mind type of focus it's still fun as a star wars movie you're just gonna be disappointed if you're basing your assumptions off the original trilogy because this is really nothing like it the only thing better than this, the only thing that this movie has that is better than the original trilogy is probably the fight scenes so have you seen phantom menace or have you rewatched phantom menace if you have comment below subscribe it's really easy um let me know what you think like and share this video please and uh have a good one